Hi, in our previous video we finished most of the game and we're just down to the last few parts. So let's take a look at the game as it is now and see what we have left to do. So we're going to press back arrow 1 to go into basic and sys 4096 to run our game. So the game plays and when the game ends, we're left at a basic prompt. So what we want to add next is a uh, game over, do you want to play again? And then ask the user to press you know, why to continue or any other key to exit. So let's get that going. So we're going to jump to the bottom of our file where our game over routine is. This is the label that the CPU goes to when the game ends. And as you can see here, it's setting memory address 286 to one, which sets the cursor color to white and it drops us into basic. So we're gonna kind of expand upon that. So let's define a label here. And this is going to contain the text game over play again. We want to ask the user this if they want to play again. So we're going to create a routine here called play again. And we will surround this in a block because we're going to have a loop in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the cursor color to white. Because we're doing it here, we no longer need it here. And this routine is going to jump into play again. So what will happen now is when a game ends, it's going to jump into this routine here. And then we're going to call this label end game because we're going to jump back to here to go to basic if the person doesn't press Y. So we're going to use the kernel to move our cursor and it's the plot command. And we're going to clear the carry bit because that tells the plot command that we want to set the position of the cursor. We're going to load into the X register 11 we're going to load into the Y register an eight. And then we're going to call the kernel plot routine at E58 to move the cursor to that position. And then next we're going to use our print macro to print the text TXT again. This is a macro that we created in our first video in our common.m macro file. Once the message is printed to the screen, we now want to wait for the user to press a key. So we're going to create a label called PA key. This is going to represent a loop. And we're going to use another kernel call to FFE4. This subroutine from the kernel is going to check to see if the user pressed a key. If they did, it's going to put the ASCII value of that key in the accumulator. If not, it'll load the accumulator with zero. So if they didn't press a key, as I just said, the accumulator gets loaded with zero, which means that the zero flag is set. And then we can use our BEQ mnemonic, which will branch if the zero flag is set to PA key. So this kind of basically reads as, did someone press the keyboard? Nope, go into an endless loop. Now if they press a key, it'll fall down to here, and we're gonna compare then the accumulator with a immediate value of 89, which is the ASCII value for Y. So did the user press Y? If they did press Y, and again, the CMP mnemonic, if the values are equals, will set the zero flag, so we can use BEQ. And we're going to go to start. The start label we're going to place in a moment at the very top of our code. And that's where we're going to pass control to so the game can restart. If they did not press Y, we're going to jump to end game. And that's this routine over here, which will drop us to basic. So we just need to go define start. So we're going to jump to the very top of the file. And we're going to put a label right here at the very beginning of our code. So if they press Y, it'll jump back to the start. it will reinitialize the sound reinitialize a game, rebuild the screen, and go right into the game. So let's see if this assembles. So our assembly failed, and it's a very interesting error message. Branch out of range, and it's on a line of code where our BEQ start command is. So let's go take a look at what happened. So I'm going to jump to the bottom of our code, and here it is, BEQ start. An interesting thing about the branch commands on 6502, you can only branch forward and backwards about 127 bytes. And the problem is our start label is way up here, which is more than 127 bytes backwards. So how do we get there? Well, so we have to put in some kind of trampoline code. And what I mean by that is instead of branching to start, we're gonna have to create a label here called go start and this will do a jump to start, because jump can go anywhere. And instead of BEQ start, it will BEQ to go start. So it's kind of a trampoline. We do a small jump here, 
and then we bounce again way, 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 way up to the top to where the start is. So let's give this an assemble. This should solve our problem. Let's back arrow three. And this time there are no errors. So let's run our game and see how it plays out. So back arrow one to go to basic. And we're gonna run our game. We're gonna end our game by getting it wrong. Game over, play again. I'm gonna choose Y. And we're right back into the game. And then this time we're gonna lose and press N for no. Actually, we'll just press any other key. We'll press, I don't know, W. And it drops us back to basic. Pretty close to where I wanna be. But I think it would be better if we reset the screen back to the Commodore native colors and maybe have a little friendly thanks for playing kind of a message. So let's jump back in the editor and do just that. So I'm gonna to jump to the bottom of our code because that's where all of our end game code is. And let's take a look at this label end game. So right now, when the code comes back here, it just does an RTS, which drops us in basic. So let's set the colors first. So we're gonna do a poke. And again, poke is a macro that we created in our first video in common.m. And basically it does an LDA of value and does an STA into a memory address. So we're gonna store it in memory address 286 and we're gonna pass in 14, which is light blue. We're gonna poke DO20 with 14, that's the border. We're gonna poke DO21 with six. Six is blue and that's the screen color. So now we have the Commodore colors reset. And then we're going to create a little block of text here, and txt dot null means it's gonna be a null terminated string, meaning it ends in a zero. We're gonna press back arrow A to put us into basic quoted mode. So we can do things like shift clear to clear the screen. And then we can write, thanks for playing. We're gonna press the back arrow to get out of quoted mode. So now we have this block of text, and all we have to do here is call our print macro that we also created in our first video to print this text to the screen. Now we're gonna pass in end txt, and then we're gonna RTS to return back into basic. So let's see how this plays out. All right, let's back arrow one to go into basic, and let's give this a try. I'm gonna press N for no. And we got our commenter colors back. We got a little thanks for playing message and we're back at the ready prompt. Excellent. Let's drop back into the editor. At this point, we should save our code since we are at a pretty good milestone here. So back arrow S, at colon to replace the existing file. And the game is called Copycat. All right, so there's only one item left on our list and that is to do something when a player beats the game. To beat the game, they just have to beat the 20th round. And then when we do beat the game, we're gonna display a little bit of text, maybe flash the screen a few colors, and then go to the routine that asks them if they wanna play again. And we're gonna insert that logic right here at the go next round. This is the label that's called when a player completes a round and we're about to start the next one. So we're gonna load into the accumulator the round after we've incremented it. And then we're gonna compare that accumulator with the value 21. Now I'm gonna be a little bit real here. There's probably no way I'm gonna get 20 rounds in this game complete. So for testing, we're gonna make it two rounds. All right, so of course CMP will set the zero flag if the values are equal. So we can use our branch if equal or branch if zero flag is, is set. And we're gonna branch over to perf game. So now let's go write that subroutine perf game. So let's put it probably down here. Ooh, I'm gonna sneak in a dot end at the bottom of this file. I have noticed that sometimes Turbo Macro Pro, the assembly will get all screwy if you don't have this in here. Not very often, but like one in 30 compiles, it'll freak out. So we're gonna just toss dot end in there. All right, so let's uh, declare a subroutine for a perf game. All right, let's start by creating um, a line of text here that says perfect score. I'm gonna get very excited for that. And then in this routine, we're going to uh, set the cursor color to white by setting by putting the value one in memory just 286. We're gonna call our plot routine again. So we're gonna clear the carry to set the cursor position. We're gonna load X with 10. 
then we're going to call the kernel routine plot with E50A. Uh, then once it's plotted, we're going to print out PG text. And then we're going to jump over to play again. All right. So this should give us when we beat the game after beating the first round, perfect score and then your normal end game routine. So let's give this a try. So back arrow three to assemble. Okay, we can do back arrow one and let's give this a try. Get it right. Perfect score to play again. No, let's make this a little bit more exciting. Let's first save this. Now let's add some flashing colors to that. So we're gonna load into the accumulator 133. We're gonna wait 133 one 16th of a second. And how are we gonna do that? We're going to use the Jiffy Clock, the very, very low byte of the Jiffy Clock. We covered this, I believe, in the first video when we made our delay routine. But just a quick refresher, memory address A2, that's 00A2 because it's in the zero page, contains the low byte of the Jiffy Clock. And it just ticks up one number every 1 60th of a second. And we're gonna wait 133 of those. So if we take 133 and we add it to the value, it'll give us a target value to wait for. And it may even flip over and that's okay. So then we're gonna do a color LP. That's gonna be our color loop. We're gonna increment the value in D020. And of course that's the border. So the border will change the color. We're gonna compare the accumulator with the value in zero page A2, which is the low byte of the Jiffy clock. So at some point, it's gonna match what we added to it originally. It hasn't reached it yet. So the zero flag is not set because it's not equal. So we're gonna branch over to color LP. That's pretty much what we need. That should give us some crazy borders for a few seconds. So let's assemble this. All right. Uh, let's run it. Uh, left arrow one. Get it right. Awesome. Perfect score. So you'll notice the border color is green. And that's because we're incrementing the border in a loop 133 times. So that's what black plus 133 is. It's this kind of nice green, and that's fine. So, But if I were to press Y for yes, the game will reset the border and will continue. And then if we say no, after we get our perfect score, it'll end. The very last thing we need to change now is that two needs to become a 21. Here it is, 21. And that's how we beat the game. So now we have finished the game. We're gonna save our final copy of it. Back arrow S, add colon copycat. Now that our game is complete, Let's save a copy that can be loaded and run from the Commodore. So we're going to use back arrow 5 this time. Instead of assembling to memory, it's going to assemble to a disk file. So we're going to assemble to copycat $1,000. The $1,000 is a naming convention to let people know when they see this file in the directory that they have to assist 4096 to run this game. And for completeness, I will let you witness how long it actually takes to compile the source code. It is not short. Very exciting. Let's reboot our computer and try running it.
awesome. We have finished our game. This is very exciting. We might as well edit our final notes for it. So now we can come down to here, the very bottom. And we've completed this. So and we'll just change this text around a little bit. At 21st round, flash borders and show perfect score message. All right. And then we, of course, we put our, do you want to play again? And then we're going to save this. And that's it. We've, we've completely finished the game. And awesome. So at this point, I've now finished my first ever game in 6502 assembler on a Commodore 64. And I am super, super happy. Uh, this is fantastic. And I'm so glad you hung around to the end of this video to share this with me. I hope you enjoyed watching me write this. Hopefully, maybe you even had encouraged to write your own game. But yes, I had a ton of fun doing this. And uh, again, I thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hmm, I wonder what I'm going to do next. Well, whatever it is, I hope you're there for it. Take care, all.